Good afternoon. Welcome once again to my daily chat. Um, today can have some fun. At least I hope we are. <laughs> I had so much stuff going through my head today. Anyway, uh, let me start with the title, introduce myself, then I'll spew some stuff. Um, this is episode number 770, and the topic today is the dark secret to finding love. And then in parentheses, not quite so dark. And I'll play with that a little bit more in a moment. But before I jump into that whole topic and see if there's something else that's on hanging out the wings because I've got something else brewing, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I'm doing these talks and why you might want to join me. My name is Barry Selby, as you probably figured out from looking around the description on the title of the broadcast. I am the best-selling author of 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples for healthy relationships. Um, I'm also an inspirational speaker and a relationship attraction expert helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which informs my work and why something, something's bugging me right now, so it may go to that topic, so bear with me. Um, so a certain drive to support and serve women in the world in their work, which is why I help them find amazing relationships, help them find balance in life, love, and business, and help them really come home to themselves. And I'm also... Um, addicted to these talks I think <laughs> I've been in these talks now for over two years called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart this is number 770 as I mentioned and to be honest I think these are selfish just to be totally transparent I do these talks to help you but I'm, a lot of times I'm doing it to help me remember my truth and speak from a true message so today's topic okay let me let me just be transparent I want to talk about this this, this thing about we keep looking for love in all the wrong places and I've done that before But it's been bugging me this, this, I'm sorry, okay. Let me just talk about what's on my mind. What's been bugging me today, and just bugging me for a few days now, is this, um, and I don't want to get political, but this Epstein, Acosta, Trump triangle. It's been bugging me because I'm, I don't think many person seeing this, but it's bugging me because I'm watching money and bribery and um, back padding, back patting, some of that be the way being the way things are done and the fallout is a lot of women who have been hurt aren't getting due process they're not being respected they're not being heard and they're not being compensated or counseled or supported in any way shape or form and it's it's pissing me off to be blunt and i've been watching this on the news and trying not to watch too much news because it's it's really frustrating to me to watch this guy because he has so much money get away with heinous acts and then also people who basically he's paid, I'm sure it paid off just, just, just to be truly, um, th what I'm thinking I'm seeing out there. So I need to get this out of my system first. So let me talk about this first just to be done with it so I can move back to what I'm planning on talking about today because it's really been on my mind. Um, there's a lot of old boy network that's still happening in the circles of the rich and powerful, very clearly. And watching how the rest of the population, which includes women especially, but also minorities, including people who aren't the rich and wealthy, like more than who aren't the one percent, I'm watching those people be excluded from the the. What's the word I'm looking for? It's not the club, but it's the clique. Famous the word of what the other people are conforming, and it's basically been bugging me. So. I've got a whole bunch of stuff that's brewing and it's not ready yet. You know what? I'm going to put this to the side for now because I, I don't want to vent about it here. But I do want to speak to the topic I did put out at the beginning because <laughs> that's a lot more enjoyable and entertaining. So, um, the dark secret about looking for love. <laughs> I hope you're sticking around for this because I, 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 I put up a disclaimer on the title when I sign off saying, excuse the initial rant, I'll get to the truth in a couple of minutes. Um, <laughs> so, the dark secret about love is not quite so dark as this. For many people, and I've been watching some friends post today, which kind of triggered this conversation, is this feeling that either you've got to just like suck up the wounds, um, love yourself anyway, and then go find love again. And I'm in, I'm in the camp, and if you watch my broadcast the last few weeks especially, I'm very clear that's not what I believe. I'm passionate about, especially about women with this uh, um, piece, that one, you don't have to keep the wounds around, so you don't have to keep... Um, prolonging them or even accepting them because the thing is 
their wounds are oftentimes more than anything else tied to beliefs about yourself that are not healthy, judgments about yourself which are not true, judgments about others that are not true, and a whole lot of emotional baggage that goes with it. And that stuff is not acceptable. Yes, loving yourself anyway, definitely. I've talked about that a lot in my, in my self-love course and, and talking about self-love, it's a, it's a definite requirement to do that. But to heal that stuff, you need to be loving yourself. So love towards yourself, not seeking love out there, but loving towards yourself is one of the things, by the way, that allows you to be more able to be compassionate with yourself. Because if you're carrying, well, if you're like anybody on the planet, you're most likely carrying wounds from the past, emotional baggage, wounds, hurt, feelings, upsets, distress, pain from the past relationships that you haven't yet resolved. And looking for love out there, especially for the women, and I'll talk about the difference in a moment about that, is a false premise to think you're going to cover up the pain with a band-aid. And that's all it really is. The wound doesn't go away. In fact, it can be stifled and, and um, subdued enough that it goes underground. And if you know anything about the way that the mental, emotional, and physical levels inter interact, when one of them's out of alignment, they all go out of alignment. Meaning that if you are somebody who is unwilling to face your wounds from the past relationships, then, and you suppress that upset feelings or hurt feelings, it will show up in other ways. Either in your beliefs about yourself, where you might feel less of yourself, you don't feel confident anymore, or you don't trust yourself, those sort of things. And or, you start getting physical symptoms, yes, physical symptoms that are outward expressions of what is underlying the, the actual pain. There's a lot of research out there about how emotional pain can cause physical pain, how emotional upsets can cause physical upsets. It's all tied together. So I recommend, highly recommend, that you put some energy and some focus into healing those emotional and mental wounds so that you don't take them on physically. So this makes sense. And this is, this is I was, was going to be light, but apparently it's going darker and deeper again. It's one of those days that it must be the Mercury stuff going on. So, as I said, the mental, emotional, and physical levels are all tied together. Meaning that if you do transform and heal and love those wounds inside so they get healed, then your mental wiring, as in the beliefs about yourself, will be raised up so you actually start loving yourself more and appreciating yourself more. And your physical well-being will be maintained. So, choice point. You can either ignore them or you can do something about them. As you can tell from what I'm talking about here, I recommend highly that you do something about those baggage, those emotional baggage and wounds and pains so you can be free to love again. Now, the piece I said about looking for love out there being the dark secret, well, the not so dark secret, is that first of all, well, two things. Two things, okay. <laughs> One of them which is that you cannot get loved out there any more than you can love yourself. So that's part of the thing is that you really self-love is a key fundamental part of getting to be held in a healthy, healthy relationship you're out there looking for love for this coming from somebody else you're never going to be satisfied never going to be satisfied because you always keep wanting more and more and more and never feeling fulfilled when you love yourself first yes love yourself first i'm adamant about this then your relationships outside are less um but you're less burdensome to your outside relationships, is what I want to say. You're loving to them, they're loving to you, and it's great. But because you're already fulfilled by loving yourself already, the love from somebody else washes over you like, I'm going to say like gravy, that's not a good term. <laughs> but something much more wonderful than if you're looking for love to fill up this void you have inside. So self-love first. Secondly, so third now, I'll come, I'll just count now. Ladies, if you're out there looking for love, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> I've said so about this before because if you are if you're out there looking you're hunting and ladies when you're hunting you're in your masculine and if you want a masculine man you do not want to be in your masculine yourself because masculine doesn't work with masculine masculine works with feminine and so ladies if you're in your masculine which for some women is natural but most women it's not to stay there if you're in your masculine too much then you're going to find you'll be attracted to men in their feminine dun, 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 which may not be what you want now, I spent a lot of time with my feminine, so I, I did spend a lot of time with my feminine without realizing it. So I know what it feels like to be in the receiving end of women in the masculine. The sex is still great, just to be clear about that. <laughs> the chemistry is there, definitely. However, the polarity was switched. 
And for most people, this is a generality, not everybody, but most people, men naturally reside more in their masculine when they're in the polarity. Women naturally move into their feminine in their polarity. And when that happens, there's great chemistry again, great sex, connection, everything else, well, it's great. But the thing is, ladies, the feminine doesn't pursue. The feminine doesn't chase. The feminine does not seek. That's why seeking love isn't working. What the feminine does is attract. And that's the difference for the energetic. We men in our masculine are more driven to achieve, to succeed, to get things done, to make things happen. That's the masculine energy. Feminine energy is to invite in, to attract, to bring to itself. I didn't say herself, to itself, because feminine and masculine are not male and female. They align with male and female, generally, generally speaking, but the masculine and feminine are polarities of energy. So when you're in your feminine, ladies, one, you become more attractive because you're attracting, funny that works together, and two, you'll be more visible to a masculine man. And I think for most ladies who follow me in my work, when you're looking for that relationship paradigm, you want a man who's going to lead, who's going to be taking charge, who's going to be taking care of you, who's going to show up and be that grounded, conscious presence that you want to know you can rely upon. That's the masculine energy you want to have in your life. And better than doing it yourself is to let a man do it for you. The dance of this this polarity is one of the biggest things that people don't get don't understand in a relationship. It's one of the things that I didn't understand for many years. I was so out of alignment, but the work I started doing back in 2007, so it's been 12 years now, was a game changer, which is what put me on this path. So the masculine feminine piece is a big piece of my work because it was what changed my life for the better. So that piece, that understanding is part of it. But again, for women, it's the receptivity, it's the attraction energy, it's the inviting in energy that brings love to you. But again, you don't do that until you love yourself first, as I said, because if you're trying to fill up from outside, you're filling a void that can't be filled. The only way it can fill is from inside first. So loving yourself first and then attracting in the love from outside is how women ideally function best to get relationship. For men, is fill up with love inside, same starting point, and then go seek someone you want to play with who is of a compatible, wonderful, polar, polar, polarized, energetic to fit with you. But either way, you're already filled up first. Love yourself first before you love somebody else. It's a teaching I talked about a while ago that I learned way back in the 80s. In a seminar, we talked about how um, one of the ground rules was take care of yourself first so you can take care of others. The same thing I believe is true about love, is love yourself first so you can then love others, and love yourself first so you can then feel the love from others. It's fundamental. And I've experienced for myself definitely times where I was in love with somebody else, thinking that, that if I loved them enough, they would love me back, which is another trap we fall into. If I love them enough, they'll love me more. Maybe not. So that's another piece of this trap we fall into. So again, self-love first. When I can love myself fully, which I didn't learn that until a long time either, then when I love with somebody else, then the love they, supply, they send to me, the love they share with me is great. And I can love them easily because I'm not coming from a place of lack, I'm coming from overflow. And having an abundance of love inside is a gift that everybody loves. Some of them aren't ready to take it or receive it, but you can give it as you wish. It also tends to put you in a place where you become more discerning of who you want to be with. Because the other part about this self-love piece is that when you learn to love yourself and really embrace who you are and love yourself fully, one, you're not so desperate for a partnership. Two, you're also not so, um, what's the word looking for? Um, you, let me say this way, you're more caring about what you, who you want to be with. That's what I want to say. Your, your selection criteria improves. Your discernment improves. That's what I'm looking to say. When you love yourself first, your choice, your, your decision to choose goes up in, in status, in stature. So this whole paradigm of loving yourself first has many spokes and many pieces. So I think if I make this clear, that makes sense. Um, there was another piece in there. What was that? I think that might be it. Love yourself first to attract love out there. Love yourself first and heal the wounds inside. Oh, yes, the other piece I did, I did mention earlier. So by loving yourself first, it's a great... Um, 
environment, the Ukrainian side, to heal those wounds I mentioned earlier. Forgiveness of yourself, acceptance for yourself, loving those parts inside that are hurt, that are wounded, is, the, is one of the best ways to heal so you can then be more available to love outside as well. So this self-love tool I'm talking about is, is like a multi-tool. It helps you fill up your own tanks first, you're not as needy. It, lets you, it allows you to learn to love yourself more, especially through the wounds and pain and judgments you've been carrying against yourself. Self-love is a powerful tool because what happens is when you love yourself fully, the act of forgiveness is graceful and easy. For most people, forgiveness is a mechanical, hef heavy and hard thing to do. But when you learn how to forgive from compassion and love, it's like putting on a calling um, bandage over a hot, uh, uh, putting, putting on, um, I'm, sorry, I'm pulling for analogies that are coming through. But it's basically more potent, more effective and more easy, more functionally easy if you do it when you're already loving and when you have love and compassion in yourself to do forgiveness. So it's a very useful skill in all sorts of areas. As a, as a reminder and offering, I will put in the comments the self-love practice because it is something I recommend it highly because if you do that first, you start with that, everything else unfolds from that as I mentioned. It'll prepare you for better relationships. It'll prepare you to love yourself more. It'll prepare you to heal yourself so that all things start changing for your better, for your good if you're better, if you're good, something like that. So we'll put a link in the comments for that. I'll put a link in the comments for my book because I mentioned that earlier too. And if you want to have a conversation to go deeper than that, I do offer a complimentary clarity conversation. I'll put a link in the comments for that as well. Um, this is what I was going to talk about. The early part of that event, that's out the way. I'll, I'll, I'll put an addendum or a, po a post a title update on when I sign off to let people know that the first few minutes are just a rant and they get past that because I had to talk about it. It was bugging me. I think that's about it. By the way, if you haven't seen my, you haven't seen my broadcast before, they're usually more cohesive than this, and also usually just one topic, not two. Um, join my, my usual broadcasts are at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook. I also put them onto my YouTube channel and also my business page, I'll tell you where to find them. So Facebook Live personal page, which is Barry Selby on Facebook at 5 p.m. Pacific time, right here, every day of the week, seven days a week. The replays go to my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author, you can watch them there, and also my YouTube channel, which is also Barry Selby. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And on there's a playlist called Messages from the Masculine. Um, that, I think, covers everything. Yeah, I think that's it. I appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, thoughts, comments, etc., please put them below and I'll respond when I sign off. Uh, if you want to reach out for help, I'll put the three links in the comments. You can find those as well. And as always, I invite you to take care of yourself. Self-care first, so then take care of others, as I mentioned. With that, I thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow, and uh, be well. See you again soon. Bye.